Good afternoon, uh, my name is Joe Chilcott and I'm going to be talking to you about health behaviour for COVID-19. And apologies, my camera isn't working. So as health psychologists, we're interested in health behaviour. And these can be defined as any behaviour that relates to the maintenance of health. So that's keeping healthy or actually improving one's health. So traditionally, we've defined these behaviours as either being protective. So that may include physical activity, screening and vaccination type behaviours and having a balanced diet. Versus risky health behaviours, which may include smoking, alcohol use and drug use. So what we know is that health behaviours are associated with a variety of health outcomes, including the development of long term conditions, including heart disease and cancer. And they're also implicated in mental health disorders such as anxiety and depression. Therefore, there's a need to understand health behaviour if we are to develop ways to support people to change their behaviour, particularly in times of national crisis such as uh, COVID-19. So what we know is that the most critical element in order to reduce viral transmission is public behaviour. So we've been asked to engage and maintain the following risk-reducing behaviours. These include regular and efficient hand washing, so that's washing your hands for 20 seconds with warm soapy water. Avoid touching your nose, eyes and mouth. Employing social distancing, so that's standing at least two metres apart. Self-isolation and non-essential travel. And what we know is that smokers are at increased risk of contracting COVID-19. And we think this is because of the act of smoking and increasing that risk of hand-to-mouth um, infection. Smokers may also have underlying lung disease or reduced lung capacity. Therefore, smokers tend to have more severe symptoms when infected. And in fact, they're 1.4 times more likely to have these severe symptoms compared to non-smokers. Smokers are also around two and a half times more likely to be admitted to an ICU requiring mechanical ventilation or dying compared to non-smokers. And what we know from previous pandemics is that often knowledge and intention of the desired behaviour is high. So people generally know what they need to do and they intend to do so. However, enacting that actual behaviour is often quite low. So we call this the intention behaviour gap. There's a gap between being informed and intending to behave in a certain way and actually doing those behaviours. So a simple strategy to reduce this intention behaviour gap is action planning, what psychologists call implementation intentions, to help form regular habits. So here you would write a plan of when, where and how you would do the behaviour. You would rehearse the plan and with time the idea is that the plan would become automatic and therefore allow more automated behaviour. So every time you open the front door, for example, in the context of around the front door, if the behaviour that's desired is to keep your hands clean and avoid contamination, your plan could be to leave a hand sanitizer by the front door in line of sight. So by writing that plan and rehearsing that plan, hopefully in that context, the behaviour will become more automatic. So over the last 40 years or so, there's been significant amount of research to understand health behaviour and various models of health behaviour. So one of the more recent and complete models is the COMBI model by Mickey and colleagues. And this refers to three key factors that drive behaviour. The first being capability, the second being opportunity, and the third being motivation. So the first is your capability, that's your psychological as well as your physical capability in order to enact the behaviour. So psychological capability refers to things like having knowledge and being able, and being able to perform the behaviour and believing you can perform that behaviour. Physical capability may include being physically able in terms of strength or stamina to actually perform a given behaviour. Second, you need the opportunity. So these are social and physical factors and resources that enable behaviour. So for example, to keep clean, you would need uh, soapy water, for example, or access to hand gel. This also reflects on social norms. So the social context often provides us 
or actually denies us the opportunity to engage with, with, a, with a desired behaviour. The third is motivation, which includes decision making, emotions, which could include avoidance, fear, anxiety, and habits. So these three essential factors are useful to help explaining a variety of behaviours, not just COVID related behaviours, but actually any desired health behaviour. So here's some useful strategies in order to increase protective health behaviour. So that could be COVID-19 related behaviours or indeed any other type of health behaviour, say for example, physical activity. So to increase capability, learn how to do the desired behaviour and practice doing it. To improve opportunity, plan ahead and use implementation intentions, these short action plans. And finally, to increase motivation, try and make the behaviour more attractive or at least less aversive. Build them into daily routines. And particularly in relation to COVID, when you are doing a variety of behaviours, including social distancing, do explain to others what you're doing and also give feedback to others. So I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.